Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Wednesday, the 26th of May, 2021. I hope you're all healthy and COVID-free. I hope your family is safe and healthy in these dangerous and violent times in which we live. Blessings to those that work in the healthcare field who are attempting to save life, even sometimes at the expense of their own for people they don't even know. Blessings upon those that pick up garbage for us and keep our places clean. Blessings also upon those that make deliveries for us, unsung heroes that make deliveries in all types of weather, in all types of situation, in all types of vehicles to give us conveniences we take for granted. Also, double blessing on those that are working to try to free, to deliver, to rescue boys and girls, teenagers, men and women, children, and oftentimes babies from the clutches of perverts who are engaged in sex trade and uh, human sac uh, human uh, trafficking and sex trade operations, of which there's a billion dollar industry supporting it, many of which are very powerful people. And so blessings upon those trying to deliver such ones from these clutches of perverts and curses upon the perverts. Finally, blessings upon those working on behalf of the homeless. 500,000 men and women, boys and girls in the United States of America who don't have a roof over their head today and will not have one tonight. With millions around the world in even worse situations. Blessings upon them and upon those that are in those situations, for theirs is the kingdom. There will be a basketball game tonight. It will be game two of the New York Knicks against the Atlanta Hawks at Madison Square Garden. The first game was a two-point game, 107-105 in favor of the Hawks uh, on a on a uh, Trey Young final shot in the last in under 30 seconds left uh, to give the Hawks the victory. The first game featured a struggle, a struggling Julius Randle, a struggling, continuing to struggle Alfred Payton, and a struggling Reggie Bullock. It featured dynamic play from Alec Burks, as well as the consistent dynamic play from Mr. Vintage, Derrick Rose. Tonight, we expect adjustments in NBA playoffs. Every team that's in the playoffs learns to make adjustments if they want to survive in the playoffs. Each team is scheduled to play each other seven games. So you're not playing a different team. You're playing the same team. You're only focused on that team. And so the Knicks plan is very simple. You see, the Atlanta Hawks have many weapons, many shooters. Andre Hunter, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Lou Williams, uh, Danilo Gallinari. Uh, they have many, many weapons. But they have one key that turns the engine. And that is Trey Young. And so the goal here would be to take Trey Young out of the game. Not literally out of the basketball game in terms of off the court, but to make him ineffective on the court to make someone else beat you. Tom Thibodeau is very good at this. Take cutting off the head of the snake. He has options as to how to do that. Alfred Payton has shown himself ineffective, not just against Trey Young, but in the last month or so of the season, he has been struggling defensively against point guards, opposing point guards from various teams. We think that it would be time for Tom Thibodeau to make a change at the point guard position for defensive purposes. He put Frank Nilakina in 30 for 32 seconds of the game. It is not appropriate, nor professional, nor right to expect any player to come in for 32 seconds and be effective on a consistent basis. We think he should probably start, Frank, at the point guard position for defensive purposes, at least to slow down Trey Young, because Frank has shown himself effective in his four-year career, despite any criticisms, against Trey Young. He has shown himself effective, and even there have been times in the past where Frank has used his height advantage offensively against Trey Young, because Trey Young cannot guard anybody. 
So you expect a change, possibly Frank starting at the point guard. I've not heard anything about this. I'm just suggesting it. Or Derrick Rose or Alec Burks. I don't think he will start Emmanuel quickly at the point, although he might because Emmanuel quickly's defense has been solid for most of the season. It's been getting better, especially for a rookie. He might start Emmanuel quickly. Uh, and he might start Alec Burks to give them an uh, offensive punch because, as I said, Trey Young cannot guard anyone, which brings me to the next point. A guy like Trey Young, that's an offensive minded player, a key player for his team in terms of their ability to win basketball games, you must make him work on both ends of the basketball floor, which means the New York Knicks need to have the ball moving to create mismatches against Trey Young, preferably within the three-point line, preferably in the low block area where Trey Young is weakest. What will happen in that scenario when Trey Young is caught on a low block position against anybody on the New York Knicks? There will be a double team. And so when the double team comes, whoever that player is will either have to make a quick move against Trey Young or swing the ball very quickly out of their hands into an open shooter. Because once you have a double team on any player, as Tom Thibodeau often says, you have a five on four or a four on three mismatch on the floor. So you must exploit that four on three mismatch as quickly as possible. That would be, I think, the strategy tonight that I think we will see Tom Thibodeau employ. There will be a defender on Trey Young. Now, whether that be Frank Nilakina, which is what I suggest, or Reggie Bullock, which would be the next player you might use because this is where the versatility of both Bullock and R.J. Barrett come in. R.J. is often people are trying to limit him and saying he's strictly a two guard or he's strictly a three. He's what we call a wing. And this is a situation where you see the difference between a wing and somebody that's strictly a two or a three. A wing can play both positions and guard both positions. So that if we require Reggie Bullock, if he doesn't start Frank Nilekina, and maybe he starts Emmanuel quickly, or maybe he starts Alec Burke, or maybe he starts uh, Derrick Rose, you would have Reggie Bullock guarding Trey Young, 94 feet. And you would have R.J. Barrett guarding Kevin Herter, the other guard, or Bogdan Vich, whichever one. Okay. And that would give you opportunity. I still favor having Frank because Frank could successfully guard Trey Young 94 feet from the time he gets the ball inbounds all the way to the other end of the floor. Also, I expect them to force Trey Young to shoot long distance. I know he's a dangerous shooter, but even as a three point shooter, I have not looked at his stats there yet, but I believe his three point percentage is below 40%. Um, he is capable, obviously, of, of hitting a great number of shots and getting very hot from that range. But I think it would be better, we'd be better served trying to, uh, cause Trey Young to beat us from 35 to 40 feet away rather than having him get into the lane and cause havoc that way. I think it would be better served to have him, uh, be a long distance shooter, possibly with uh, pressure on him as well. If he had pressure on him from the long distance, that's a better. In fact, uh, it looks like against us, he has shot 21% from three. The last 10 games, he has shot 25% from three. And on the road, he shoots 34% from three. His career, 34% three point shooter. I would make him a long distance three point shooter. I would have Frank guard him, use his seven foot wingspan to cause uh, Trey Young to not be able to drive to, to create a wall, so Trey Young cannot drive to the basket, and he will either be forced to shoot because he'll be open in his in his mind, or to pass the ball. And so um, that's what I'm expecting tonight. So I'm expecting a higher level of activity on the defensive end from the New York Knicks. I'm expecting them to hold the Atlanta Hawks to under 100 points tonight, while themselves moving the basketball and as. Thibodeau also says, letting the game dictate what you should do. If they're double teaming Julius Randle, swing the basketball. Try to look for, to exploit mismatches with Trey Young. 
hit your open threes. But make sure they're good shots. See, this is the thing. This is the key thing. We don't want off balance shots a couple of times in the last game. Some of the players were what we call were taking the jump shots while they were floating. In other words, they were moving while they were they were jumping toward a side while they were trying to shoot the basketball instead of jumping straight up in the air, and that caused the shot to go off. So we want to take good three-point shots, create good open looks. If we do that, uh, we'll be in good shape because Reggie Bullock and R.J. Barrett, I expect R.J. Barrett to be a problem tonight. He generally does not have two bad games in a row, and he did not have a bad game the last game per se. He just wasn't as dynamic in that spot that you would expect him to be. I expect him to be a problem tonight. Um, and, and I'm hoping that the Knicks can create open looks for Reggie Bullock, and I then, if that's the case, I think Reggie Bullock will be a problem tonight. Reggie Bullock and Alec Burke are playoff type performers. They're not the type of guys to be all stars during the course of a season. These are the type of players you want on a good team in the playoffs. And so I expect both Burks and Bullock to bounce back. Well, Burks had a great game the other day. I expect Bullock to bounce back because the ball movement should improve. I expect it an uptick in the defensive pressure. And they're going to be the Atlanta going to be dependent on other players to beat us. John Collins. Um, Bogdanovich, which we need to really have. That's why I expect Frank to be out there because you really need Bullock to guard Bogdanovich. You really want him to do that because Bogdanovich is shooting the lights out. The last game we played against them, uh, he was he was a problem, and he's been a problem for the last two three months of the season since he came back from injury. Bogdanovich has been a problem. Part of the Hawks' struggles is that Bogdanovich has been hurt for the early part of the season, but he is uh, against us a thirty nine percent three-point shooter. His last 10 games of the season, he shot 52% from the three-point line. And for on the road, he shot 41% from the three-point line. He's a career 39% three-point shooter, and he's 44 in the postseason. The guy is lights out. Okay? So we need someone on him full-time. That's why I suggest Reggie Bullock. And so um, we'll see what Tom does, but I hope he does not start Alfred Payton. We've been getting in the hole uh, too often. Uh, with him on the floor early in the game, and we really don't want to do that tonight. Not that uh, I don't like when the Knicks are blowing them out in the first quarter unless they can sustain that. Sometimes that hype dies down and allows a comeback and a run, which in playoffs happens very often. So I would like the Knicks to be steady, 48 minutes of good basketball, 48 minutes of high-level defense, but in ball movement. We need to win the rebounding battle, which we did against them the last game. We need to do that again, and we need to have... uh the, the snake's head cut off, which is Trey Young. So let's enjoy the game tonight. Be safe out there today. Happy Wednesday. Shalom.